Hey everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're diving into the world of .NET 8, and I'm going to show you how to generate a self-signed certificate and add it to your certificate store. But first, let's talk about why you might need a certificate in the first place. Let's jump right in. Certificates are essential for securing communications and verifying identities in the digital world. Here are a few common reasons why you might need a certificate. Encrypting communications. Certificates are used in HTTPS to encrypt data sent between a client, like your web browser, and a server, ensuring that sensitive information stays private. Authenticating servers. When you visit a website, your browser checks the site's certificate to ensure you're connecting to the legitimate server and not an imposter. Code signing. Developers use certificates to sign their applications and code, which helps users verify that the software hasn't been tampered with. In our example, we're creating a self-signed certificate, which is typically used for development and testing purposes. Self-signed certificates are great for local development environments where you don't need a certificate from a trusted authority. First, let's look at the namespaces we're using. These are like the libraries we need to get our job done. Cryptography and X509 certificates is contains classes for cryptographic operations, security, and to handle the certificates. Here's our main method, where everything starts. Generate self-signed certificate line calls a method to create our certificate. We'll dive into that in a bit. Add certificate to store is adds our certificate to the local machine store. Now, let's see how we generate a self-signed certificate. This part is super cool because we're creating our own little security batch. We create an RSA key with a size of 2048 bits. This is our private key. Here, we're setting up our certificate request with the subject name, RSA key, hash algorithm SHA-256, and signature padding. We add some extensions to our certificate. These define what our certificate can do. Adding basic constraints like whether it's a CA certificate authority. Key usage extension is what the certificate can be used for example digital signatures. Subject key identifier extension is a unique identifier for our certificate. This creates the self-signed certificate valid from now until one year later. We export it as a PFX file and then create a new X509 certificate 2 object from it. Finally, let's see how we add our shiny new certificate to the certificate store. We open a certificate store with the specified name and location. We open the store with read and write permissions. This adds our certificate to the store. And we close the store to save our changes. And that's it. We've just generated a self-signed certificate and added it to our local machine certificate store. Remember, this is super useful for testing and development when you need to simulate secure communications or verify code integrity without involving a trusted certificate authority. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more coding tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.